I want to talk to you about the way in which we have been indoctrinated into this idea called whiteness and how it screwed every one of us over. In 1630, I would not have thought of myself as white. This was a concept that was built by the landowning aristocracy of Virginia to keep all of us who were working class and poor and indentured servants, essentially slaves for 10 years, apart from those Africans who were brought over slaves for life. We found common cause back in that era, and the landowners got alarmed, particularly when we rose up in rebellion in 1676. They established a series of laws that set the whites, as they came to be called, above their natural allies, the Africans held in bondage. They encoded the slave system, which had been evolving slowly. They put the whites on slave patrol. They instituted a whole set of laws over the next hundred years that changed the status of these whites relative to the Africans. Bizarre laws like they could no longer be whipped naked in public. At first, measures were passed outlawing sexual relations between blacks and whites, of course, giving worse penalties and punishments for the blacks. The Virginia Law of 1705 required that white servants be given 10 bushels of corn and a gun and 50 acres of land. The black servant, of course, got lifetime servitude. Women servants got 15 bushels of corn and 40 shillings. The elite also began a campaign to demonize the African bond laborers. They used the fear that was engendered by Bacon's Rebellion to create fear in the minds of the poor whites as well, that there was going to be a Negro revolution. Just one example is that there was a district called the Black Wall Street in Tulsa in the early 20th century. As it began to thrive, it was not the white tycoons in New York that burnt half the city to the ground. It was ordinary people like you, like me, who did their dirty work for them. After whites set fires in black Tulsa neighborhoods, they kept the white firemen away at gunpoint. Thousands of whites rampaged through the black community, killing men and women, burning and looting stores and homes. According to the Red Cross, some 1,300 homes were burned. About 10,000 blacks were left homeless. This is a brand which has been with us now for 340 years and still works to separate us from each other. Instead of looking at the rich people who are screwing us all over, we look at the people sideways or down from us and say, they are the problem. And where do we get these thoughts that they are the problem? So we are still working on behalf of rich folks. Very often in the political sphere, we vote for people who are in the pockets of rich people because we like their position on abortion, or we like their position on this, or we like their position against immigrants. We vote for them time after time, even though they vote time after time against our interests, against the interests of people who aren't wealthy, against the interests of the poor, against the interests of the working class and the middle class. And we continue to vote these people into office, and they continue to give money to the rich folks. I really don't want this to be about voting patterns, but you have to look at the way in which we vote, because we vote for the interests of rich people, not in our own interest. Don't you think it's time to try something new after this allegiance to whiteness has failed us for 340 years? We get it from a society that teaches us to continue to be white. In my 22,000 days on this planet, I have not once been harmed by an African-American man or woman. And I have been harmed numerous times by white people. What I want is to not only work on our own whiteness, but work together to dismantle this system, which is based on using our fear, our resentment, our anger at people of color, to keep the rich in power and to make them richer. I want us to build a society in which our children can be truly in a just world together. Let's not play the riches game. Let's make a new game.